In this Guided Talks, Robert talks to Mark Haslam. Mark is the founder and managing director of Loudmouth Media in Belfast. Establishing Loudmouth in 2011, after gaining valuable experience as a web consultant in the telecommunications industry, Mark's fervent passion for digital instilled his vision to set up a specialist PPC advertising agency. His aim has always been to do PPC differently, creating more transparent, measurable digital experiences and building strong, mutually beneficial relationships with clients. Mark and Robert discuss pure PPC or full service, putting stuff where people want to see it, no big business plan, how client buying habits and behaviours have changed, plus much more. And hello and welcome to the Guider Talks uh, Grow Digital Agency Initiative Talks. And today I am absolutely delighted to have with us Mark Hazlam and uh, welcome to you, Mark. Thank you very much, Robert, for, for having me. It's an absolute pleasure, absolute pleasure. So, Mark, uh, let's just go, go straight in. So, uh, what are you known for in the, in the agency world? Where are you, where, where's your agency? What's your agency? Uh, what do you specialise in? Um, what am I known for? Probably being the the overly sweary Northern Irish bloke that gets wheeled out every now and then. But um, what I would rather be known for would be as MD um, of Loudmouth Media, um, an agency I set up coming up to 10 years ago. Um, so yeah, we're a full service, I suppose, performance agency. And by that, you know, SEO, all the, all the usual stuff, SEO, social, creative, um, PPC, the video, everything that everybody else does. So have you have you always been full service or how did you start off at performance and work your way across? What was the what was the journey? We we started off as PPC because that's that's kind of what I knew um, or what I know, hopefully. Um, and then basically just as uh, as digital is kind of transformed to needing all of the various different things um, we've added them in. We're not a we're not an agency that likes to look at things in silo or be precious about our little part of the pie. We we like to contribute to the as opposed to the full thing um and, and basically be able to offer whatever makes our our clients money and if we can make a couple of quid in the process it's all the better so so why do you think so many agencies that you and i know uh have kind of stuck to the to the ppc piece because there's lots of agencies who are who are still you know we're 65 people strong we're 85 people strong what do you do we do PPC. What else do you do? We do PPC. So do you do video? We do PPC. Do you do SEO? No, no, no. We do PPC. I'm quite interested to know why you think so many have stuck to the guns. Do you know what? It's it's one of those things. I, I wanted Loudmouth just to, to be a PPC agency, but I think PPC means a number of different things to, to various different people. You know, it means Google search. It means Bing. It means social. Um it means it, it can mean so many different things. Um, I think the reason that I wanted to to stick with that is because it's what I know and it's what my my background is. Um, the reason we moved away from it was because we are a very client centric agency. We want to give our clients what they want, um, what they need. So we we had lots and lots of people that we have really good relationships. Were asking us, can we not do this? Can we not do that? And it got to the point that. We kind of thought, you know what, we should be doing this because it gives a, a better vision of, of what's going on. I think the reason that other agencies maybe don't is it's hassle. Um, maybe they can't hire the right people. Maybe maybe they don't have the expertise to, to expand it. Um, I run my agency from the point of view that I am rarely the most knowledgeable people in, or person in the room. So I bring in people that, that know more than I do. And that involves bringing in an SEO person and growing that team bringing in a performance creative person and knowing that. Um, but yeah, I think I think a lot of agencies stick with what they know. And as long as there's demand for that, then I suppose why change? But, but clients are always asking for while you're here, can't you just type type questions? And I guess there's, I guess there's an issue for me always about, about, on the one hand, we're trying to create our, our expertise. You know, I don't want to be a jack of all trades, all that, all that kind of, that kind of conversation. But at the same time, there's a client say, oh, you know, you're digital. Um, can you run an email campaign for us? Oh, you're digital. Could you, could you just 
do you've done the logo and you've done the design and build for the website could you just do some posters for us because you just just design our headed notepaper we've got menus that need printing could you print yeah. the menus uh you couldn't get some flowers for us while while you're... <laughs> so so there's got to be a, a a point at which you at which you go actually well no we're not we're not prepared to photograph the wedding or whatever it is it's, yeah. it's got to be I mean, how how do you how do you how do you let the new product lines come in? Well, I suppose we look at it from a, a very analytical point of view. We we look at impact. So it's funny when you mentioned the wedding photography thing. I had one of my creative guys this morning suggest that we should go into product photography, not understanding that that involves having a studio and loads of equipment and having product shipped to Northern Ireland. Um, so yeah. There, we won't be going into that one. I think the, the reason that we move into various different things is because we see where they fit. There's a difference in just offering a service and being able to fulfill that service, in my view. Um, we didn't wake up one morning and decide, you know what, my head of SEO or my head of PPC can now do SEO on social. We looked at the opportunity, the amount of inquiries that were coming in for it, the impact that it had on customers' bottom lines, and we hired appropriately. We... I'm a big believer in, I feel sorry for digital marketing experts because I, just, I think we all do, you know, I think it's a joke, um, especially when they get paid 25 grand and they are expected to do all of the things that you've mentioned there. We hire specialists. My PPC guys are still PPC guys. My creative guys are creative guys. My SEO just do SEO. They're not expected to know everything because you can't. Um, even within that, my PPC guys, I have a video specialist, a shopping specialist, display retargeting and so on um so yeah it's not not everybody i suppose is willing to change it's one of those things that are one of the very few things i remember from school um you know change management is very very difficult but to, for me it's a case of not even changing it's it's kind of adapting what you do because the bottom line is always the same for us we're we're only interested in performance ultimately whatever gets us to that performance is what we're willing to to do but it's always taken on with the same ethos it's not, it's not flowery. It's not fluffy. It it has a bottom line and a result in mind at all times. So do you? Uh, I mean, we've talked about this before, but I'd just be interested in your view because we had. Uh, I mean, if we just look at history, when was when was the agency set up? How old is it? Uh, it'll be ten in August. So, so in those ten, so in those ten years, when those ten years started off, Google was the only gig in town, and they were just starting to say stuff like. Mobile is the future. Mobile is, and for five years or so, maybe even more than that, maybe eight years, mobile was the future. And for the last five years, you know, video has been the future. Video is the future. Video is the future. Video is the future. Video is the future. So we have this kind of pressure, which is which we could argue is informed research, or we could argue is pushing product. Uh, coming down the line from from the platforms. Now Google, of course, is not the only not the only gig in town uh and now we have video and now we, you know and, and so on and so forth so 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 what you're saying is if i've got this right is there's a mix between clients are now asking us for this you know because clients go on facebook and facebook says you could reach a thousand people for 10 pounds yeah so clients are going to say to you why can't we do facebook i can reach a thousand clients for 10 pounds um Plus, what you you see fits your 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 values and your systems. So there's a bit of there's a bit of an entrepreneur there, but there's also a bit of a kind of customer is king. Can we help the customer piece going on? Is that kind of the, the, the shape? yeah? The, I've never thought about the entrepreneur bit. I would never describe myself to be honest as an entrepreneur. The the customer is king bit is is everything to us. Um, whenever we speak to clients. Um, we always emphasize the idea that it's it's their goal is our goal it's just how we might go about it different ways but the goal always has to be the same if it's you know if it's increased brand if it's increased revenue whatever it is they might they will always have a goal we need to agree with that or we don't take them on as a client it's it's as simple as that um so yeah the customer is king but yeah absolutely we don't we don't hold our, our clients to contracts so we have to put them first you know it's I think all too often, one of the reasons I set up Loudmouth was exactly because of that customer is king bit that I worked previously in a, a big telecoms company that offered pay-per-click as it was back then. 
mm. and they didn't care. All they cared about was a signature. Um, and I didn't like that. I, my view was that you, there's no point in having a customer for 12 months when you could have them for 10 years. But to have them for 10 years, you need to go about things with them at the center instead of yourself. So yeah, customer is king. Um, give them what they want, but guide them at the same time. That's a really interesting thing. So how have, how have um, I mean, especially in the last, so we're recording this November we are now, just about. Uh, how have customer buying habits, how have customer behaviours changed over the last six or, six or nine months for you? I read somewhere, Robert, that the last nine months, basically since March, um, so eight months, have progressed digital marketing by four or five years. I've also read that it progressed us by two years and I've read that it's regressed us by a couple of years as well. I think my opinion would be that it's progressed us by a couple of years. Um, everything has changed. You know, we, we went through the, in March, 80% of our client book, just saying, right, we need to pause, we need to stop, um, to us having grown our agency by 30 or 40% in the last few months. And that's, that's in terms of staff, revenue and everything. So behavior has changed dramatically. Um, it's changed to the point that you need to be even more dynamic than you were before. People expect things very, very quickly now. Um, I'm noticing less lag in purchases because people want stuff. They want stuff, you know, almost immediately. I thought it was bad before. My opinion is it's, it's got worse or, or better, whatever way you want to look at it. People expect things to be there, you know, as soon as they thought about it. My, my local fruit and veg place now has a website, an e-commerce store that delivers. Um, I don't know anybody that doesn't, to be quite honest. Um, as I said, I'm currently self-isolating. My, my dear wife has COVID at the moment. We had a Nero delivered the other day. I've never had coffee delivered to my house in my life, but this is now a thing. Um, Behaviour has changed dramatically. My view is that our clients, our e-commerce clients, need to plan for this for the long-term future. There's, I read something recently about how, how long it takes to reform a behaviour and apparently it's in the region of four to six months, will change somebody's behavior entirely. So we, we need to get used to the idea that people won't buy the way they did before. They won't go out shopping on a Saturday because they don't want to queue. They don't want to not be able to touch things. They don't want to sanitize every five seconds. So they will expect things to be done online. As a result, websites need to be sharper because there's more competition. Delivery needs to be sharper. Everything just needs to be two years ahead of where it was in February. 